Hey folks, uh, this is part two of the sine and cosine ratio. So I'm going to review what we did in the last lesson of the good old Sakatoa, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -O so the, the sine stands for opposite over hypotenuse, okay? The cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So some old hippie caught another hippie taking old apples, okay? Remember that? All right, so here we go. This is a review from yesterday. You don't have to write this down. This is I'm just reviewing what we did in yesterday's lesson. Okay, so write the trig ratio. So don't write this down. Just watch. Okay, there's Sakatoa. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Some old hippie caught another hippie taking old apples. Okay. All right, so there we go. So sine, cosine, and tangent equals these ratios. So the sine is is opposite over hypotenuse. So here's D. So opposite hypotenuse, 8 seventeenths. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 15 seventeenths. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So here's D. So tangent is 8 over 15. Okay, so then you can get the decimals of those. And then we got angle F. So sine and cosine sine of tangent of angle F, okay? So opposite over hypotenuse, and then that would be sine, so uh, 15 over 17, and then uh, cosine is, cosine is the leg next to the angle, adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, okay? And remember, you guys, that the sine of one acute angle is equal to the cosine of the other acute angle, 8 seventeenths. Okay, the sine of this acute angle, F, which is 15 over 17, is the same as the cosine of the other acute angle. Okay, so remember these acute angles are complementary, they, they add up to 90, these two guys. Okay, they add up to 90 because that's 90 and the whole triangle is 180. So if we take out that 90, then that means these two guys are going to be the rest of the of the triangle, which is 90, okay? And there's the decimals of those, okay? So trig ratios for complementaries, okay? So uh, if angle D and F are the acute angles, D and F are the acute angles of the right triangle, then the sine of this angle equals the cosine of this angle, okay? And um, uh, the sine of this angle equals the cosine of this angle, okay? That's what that says right there. So if theta is our angle, um, <coughs> excuse me. And then uh, my kids are building dollhouses, my geometry kids. So there's uh, lots of geometry and building construction things. So I'm having them build dollhouses, and we're going to donate them to some kindergarten classes there at the end. So that's you're hearing the chatter of those guys building in the back. So anyways, about the only time I can do a video is uh, here at class. So anyways. So the cosine of some angle, I'm sorry, the sine of some angle theta is equal to the cosine of its complement. The complement is 90 minus theta. And similarly, the cosine of theta is equal to the sine of that complement right there. Okay, so the sine of this angle is equal to the cosine of this angle and the and the sine of this angle is equal to the cosine of this angle okay so given that the sine of 38 is say is 0.616 without using a calculator write the cosine and the complementary okay remember we've done this lesson already so you don't have to write this down i'm just reminding us so the sine of theta equals the cosine of its complement right there so the cosine of of uh, 38 degrees is going to be 52 degrees, okay? So the sine of 38 equals the cosine of 52, and since the sine of 38 equals 0.616, then the cosine of 52 also equals 0.616. All right, so so what can you conclude about the sine and cosine of 45? Well, the complements of 45 is 45, so they're equal to each other. Okay, all right, and then I signed you guys that, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, part two of this lesson. This is the applications. It's not that hard you guys don't worry uh, so here we have a 12 foot ramp so here's our 12 foot ramp right there okay and the ramp makes an, an angle of 11 degrees so there's an 11 degrees right there find uh, the dimensions to the nearest foot so it looks like we're going to find this dimension x and this one here y okay all right so remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse tangent is opposite over adjacent okay so here we are this is second 
section A. Yes, I want you to write this part down here, okay? So, yeah, go ahead and uh, uh, grab your stuff. So, yeah, go ahead and take care of it. Just go in here and then, like, in the last five minutes, just walk back. Okay, good, good. All right, just make sure you get everything picked up, son. All right, okay, so sine is, okay, opposite over hypotenuse. 12 is the hypotenuse. So, so the sine of 11 is x over 12, and the cosine of 11 is adjacent, which is y over 12, okay? So, uh, and then the sine of 11 and the cosine of 11 are given right there. We used our graphing calculator. Make sure you are in degree mode. If you're not getting these values and you are not in degree mode, you are in either gradient mode or radian mode. Mode. So in your screen of your calculator, look for a D or a DEG. If you have a G or, or an R or grad or rad, that means you're in gradients or radians. Okay, anyways, so make this over 1, and then now we can cross multiply. Your book does it a little bit different. It's a little bit harder for me to explain. So I like doing this. Ratios and proportions, we can cross multiply. So 1X equals point, uh, 0.1908 times 12, and 1Y equals uh, this decimal times 12 right there okay so there we go cross multiply and we get X to be about 2.3 and always answer it in the context of the problem 2.3 feet and Y is about 11.8 feet okay easy enough huh find the acute uh, angle measures in each right triangle to the nearest degree this is where we got to do that that shift okay so let's find uh, angle R first okay so angle R is opposite over hypotenuse Okay, it's the sine, sorry, the sine of R. We could have done P if we wanted to and did the cosine of P is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so let's get the decimal version of 7 13. So we plug 7 divided by 13 in our calculator. Okay, so this says the sine of some angle gives us this decimal. So to find that angle, we hit either this calculator says shift in the upper left hand corner, but I have another calculator right here. I'm picking that up. It says a second, S uh, with a number 2 and D. So it's your second function or your shift function. So you're going to hit shift sign. Okay, so the measure of angle. R is shift sign of that decimal right there and if you do that you should get about 32.6 degrees okay round it to the nearest degree so it goes to about 33 degrees so this one's the complement of 33 so the complement of 33 is going to give us 57 okay easy enough all right okay this one here Okay, so let's find, I forgot which one I did. We can find P or R. I forgot which one I did. Oh, I chose P, okay? Now, the hypotenuse is not being used, okay? So since I'm not using the hypotenuse, this one's a tangent ratio. So the tangent of this angle is, remember, TOA, taking old apples. So opposite over hypotenuse. So 24 over 9 right there. Find that decimal, 2.6666666, and then we're going to hit shift tangent okay so hit shift tangent and that'll give us what our angle P is so I get about about 69 degrees okay so that means that R is going to be the complement of that or 21 degrees all right let's try uh, one more application problem so to the nearest tenth of a centimeter find the perimeter and the area okay so this is the hypotenuse so we're going to have to get this length and this length uh, to get the perimeter and and area. You can hear my friend in the background cracking up back there because they're having fun building doll houses. Almost done. All right, so the sign of this angle right here is opposite over hypotenuse, so x over 4.2. The cosine of this angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, so y over 4.2, okay? So we find the sine of 18, I get 0 0.309, and the cosine of 18 is 0.951. I think I did these little things backwards. I sure did. Okay, so there we go. And then we cross multiply. Okay, so when we cross multiply, we get x to be this number, 1.2979, and y to be 3.9944. Now, I know it says round to the nearest tenth, but I don't like rounding until the very end. Okay, so the perimeter is add those up. So the perimeter is the sum of those, and they add up to 9.5 and some change, so about 9.5. The area, this is the, there's the right angle right here. So this is the base, this is the altitude, or this is the base, and this is the altitude. 
altitude. But anyways, area of a triangle is one half base times altitude. So we would get 2.6 centimeters squared. Remember, area is always square units and perimeter is always just plain old units. All right, if you are in our class, that's going to be your assignment. Take care. Hope that makes sense. Sorry about the distractions in the back.